Good evening. This is Prime Time News on TV1 for the News Plus team. I am Jaimal Ratnayaka. A very good evening. I'm Mahina Bongzo. We start off with a look at your headlines tonight. The President informs the Singaporean Prime Minister that the anomalies in the Singapore-Sri Lanka free trade agreement has to be amended. Chief Prelate of the Asgiri chapter reiterates people's problems should be solved before new constitution is made. No cabinet approval for the cancellation of the A350 aircraft purchase. Losses caused in billions. COPE makes a revelation. Lakshman Kiriala says speaker's decision on the position of opposition leader cannot be contested. Brawl at the Lahugala Pradesh Sabha. President Maithripala Sirisena referring to the free trade agreement signed between Singapore and Sri Lanka has informed the Singaporean Prime Minister since there have been several shortcomings from Sri Lanka's end when drafting the FTA, the President hopes to carry out several amendments. President Maithripala Sirisena, who is on a two-day official visit to Singapore, held bilateral discussions with the Prime Minister of Singapore, Lee Sheng Lung. According to the President's media division, the two leaders agreed to further strengthen trade, tourism and industrial relations between the two countries. The President's media division added that discussions also focused on eradication of the drug menace. Meanwhile, President Maitri Palasirisena participated in a United Nations Environmental Forum of Ministers and Environmental Authorities of Asia Pacific today. <laughs> This year's forum focuses on innovative solutions for environmental challenges and sustainable consumption and production. As a descendant from a proud agriculture civilization, it gives me an immense pleasure to share Sri Lanka experience with you for the betterment of the whole world. Our ancestors were blessed with food security as they respected nature. While reaching for innovative dimensions toward global food security and encouraging sustainable consumption patterns, Sri Lanka has proposed a resolution on managing food waste at the forthcoming UN Environment Assembly. President Sirisena also proposed a program under Environmental Convention that will motivate all member countries towards fulfilling their responsibilities. According to the President's Media Division, President Sirisena's suggestions and proposals received the attention of all present at the conference today as a leader who has made several policy decisions for the protection of the environment. A wheeled armoured vehicle carrying Sri Lankan peacekeeping troops on patrol in the general area of Duenza in West Africa's trouble torn Mali came under a remote-controlled improvised explosive device attack early this morning, Mali time. The attack on the WMZ and the convoy, which was returning after a mission, killed Captain H.W.D. Jayavikrama of Lavan Sri Lanka Infantry from Polonarwa and Corporal S.S. Vijay Kumara of 1st Mechanized Infantry Regiment from Tala Kolavava. Three more Sri Lankan soldiers sustained injuries in the attack. The attack caused damage to the ill-fated WMZ vehicle and others that followed behind. UN Peacekeeping Mission Headquarters in Mali is conducting investigations into the incident. Chief Prelate of the Askari chapter of the Siam sect reiterated his stance today that the problems of the people should be solved before drafting a new constitution. There is no need for a constitution. These are all false. There is no point in doing all of this. When we went to Jaffna recently, they said the same thing. They want to live in a Sri Lanka that is free. They said they don't want to capture a country. The general public are of this view, although the others don't think so. The chief prelate made this statement when representatives of the Global Sri Lankan Forum met with him today. The group later met with the Anunayaka of the Malwatha chapter of the Siam sect. They have divided into two groups and are saying that a constitution will not be presented. Another group says that they will bring forward a constitution and that includes certain things. They have not released the contents properly yet, but there are some names that have been mentioned in these books. It is still unsure. We must be mindful about these. It is not good to take things too fast, nor can we take things slow if these people are being partisan when drafting this. Mm -hmm. 
The adjournment debate had to be stopped short today due to a lack of quorum in the chambers. During the adjournment motion debate on the delay in holding the provincial council elections, the bell was rung on three occasions. However, there were only 18 MPs present in parliament at the third ring. There was a debate in parliament regarding the constitutional council today. It is sad to say that the Constitutional Council, when taking important decisions as per the powers vested with them by Parliament and when making appointments to key positions, has adopted a policy of continuously rejecting the recommendations of the President. The President has not considered political affiliations. There was a huge issue in the country when the Attorney General was being appointed. Secondly, there was an issue when appointing the Inspector General of Police. Now the position of the Chairman of the Court of Appeal. It is an inappropriate course of action for the Constitutional Council to reject the nominee of the President. Prime Minister is the Constitutional Council today creating a constitutional crisis so that the UNP can hold on to power? <laughs> No party has a majority there. The Prime Minister and the opposition leader has the opportunity to name five people. When Sambandan was the opposition leader, there was an opinion among all parties that there should be one person from the alliance. Thereby, he awarded one appointment to the alliance. Also, when speaking of how much seniority was important, Mark Fernando was supposed to be the Chief Justice of the country. He was not appointed. Sarat Silva was appointed. They are angry about the decisions that the Supreme Court gave in December. We also know that there was no problem when the Attorney General or the IGP was appointed. All the key decisions that we took were unanimous, especially the appointment of the Attorney General and the IGP. We don't take these decisions based on the seniority only. The recommendation of the Chief Justice is also necessary. If the judiciary of the country is as beautiful and independent as you say, why has the Supreme Court not given a decision on the case filed citing the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division was not established legally? It has been over three and a half years now. Also, no decision has been given on the cases filed against the postponement of the Provincial Council elections the last time. So these are only two examples I gave you re regarding the judiciary that is independent according to him. We request you for two dates to be given during parliamentary sessions for this issue surrounding the conduct of the Constitutional Council. The most senior justice in the Supreme Court, Eva Vanasundra's name, nominated by the President for the position of Chief Justice. He sent it to the Constitutional Council. He has publicly said this. Morally, shouldn't the members of the council appointed by the Prime Minister and the previous opposition leader resign? Shouldn't the new opposition leader and Prime Minister fill those vacancies? Just as Chama Rajapaksa accepted facts and respectfully resigned, it is fair for the other members who were appointed by Sampantan to remain in their positions. When the 19th Amendment was being passed, he should have said that the others should change if the Prime Minister and the opposition leader changes. The opposition and the government jointly voted for the 19th Constitutional Amendment. Oh, the position of Chairman of the Court of Appeal is vacant now. Deepani Vijay Sundara was appointed as the working chairman for 14 days. The 14 days ended on Wednesday. Even at the end of these 14 days, a new chairman of the Court of Appeal had not been appointed. So this has become a big issue in the legal sphere. We spoke about this broadly. There should be some amendments to the 19th Constitutional Amendment. The 19th Amendment does not include what should be done after the 14 days are over. There is an issue there. There is a loophole and it should be amended. Doesn't this debate in Parliament today portray the issues of the 19th Constitutional Amendment? Can the members of the Constitutional Council, who were jointly appointed by the Prime Minister and the Opposition Leader, be changed after the Opposition Leader has changed? What happens 14 days after a temporary appointment made at a higher court? The debate in Parliament today shows that there is no clear provision in the 19th Amendment on this issue. When considering the ambiguities the 19th Amendment has created on other matters, does it not depict the fact that it has created a situation where no party can carry forward a government? A constitution or amendments to the constitution are drafted in order to govern a country with ease. However, the 19th Amendment has further aggravated the mess in the country's administration. 
The entire country knows that President's Council Jayampati Vikramaratna and M. A. Sumandiran headed the drafting of the 19th Constitutional Amendment. We reported on the preparations made by Dr. Jayampati Vikramaratna and a group who are drafting a new constitution for the country to hold discussions on a number of important matters. <laughs> The only question on the minds of the general public. Is this how the 19th Constitutional Amendment was also drafted? The Corp report submitted yesterday reveals that the agreements to purchase and cancel A350 aircrafts had not received cabinet approval. The national carrier Sri Lankan Airlines had not received approval for a cabinet paper submitted in 2013 to purchase eight A350 aircraft. After the Yahapal near government came into power, it was decided in 2016 to cancel this transaction. The COP report reveals that due to this cancellation, the purchasing of four aircraft was halted and Sri Lankan Airlines had agreed to pay 16.9 billion rupees as compensation to a company named Aircap. However, the cancellation of this agreement or the 16.9 billion rupee compensation payment had not received any cabinet approval. Though a cabinet paper had been submitted on the 15th of August 2017, the COP report reveals all payments had been completed by the 30th of July 2017. Even though an agreement to cancel the purchasing of four aircraft had been initially proposed, the agreement was concluded with only three aircraft. Conditions of the cancellation agreement includes the one-year extension of the lease period of an aircraft that was previously procured, the procurement of another aircraft through a lease arrangement, and the takeover of two narrow-bodied aircraft that were previously owned by Mihin Lanka. Among the aircraft is an A330, which incurs a monthly rental of 100 million rupees and is not being utilized for any purpose. This was also reported by News First. The COPE report also reveals that Sri Lankan Airlines currently employs 190 individuals who receive a salary of more than 1 million rupees each. Though the COPE had requested for a report comprised of the educational qualifications, age and responsibilities of these 190 employees, the committee is yet to receive it. The COP report has also revealed several irregularities that had taken place during the construction of the Central Expressway. Engineers had estimated a cost of 129 billion rupees for the first phase of the construction project. However, when awarding contracts, this cost had increased to 158 billion rupees, while a cost of 126.89 billion rupees had been estimated for the second phase of the project, this value had increased to 137.1 billion rupees when awarding the contract. The inefficiencies and irregularities that had taken place during the construction of the Central Expressway was continuously reported and highlighted by News First. A majority of irregularities taken place at Sri Lankan Airlines that are now being revealed through the COPE report was continuously reported by News First. When the public was kept in the dark from perhaps the country's largest financial fraud, the central bank bond scam, it was news first that brought the truth to light. Eventually, many facts we had reported were confirmed through the Presidential Commission of Inquiry. Several months ago, it was news first that warned against the epidemic Sri Lanka's agriculture sector is currently facing, the Sena caterpillar species. We not only highlighted the complications arising from the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, we also challenged it in court. Currently, we continue to reveal information regarding the electricity mafia taking place in Sri Lanka. Shouldn't attention be focused on these revelations made by News First at least now, when there are attempts to enter into deals that will benefit associates and friends under the guise of spot purchasing. Isn't it unfair to burden the public with repercussions that result from not taking the right decisions at the right time? In the end, it is the public that must pay the price.
More local news now. A tense situation was reported at the Lahugula Pradesh Sabha today. The United People's Freedom Alliance hold the power of the Lahugala Pradesh Sabha. The council convened under its chairman S. A. Stanley. JVP councillor W. M. H. Mahinda made an allegation that there was an irregularity when light bulbs were fixed along a rural road in the Hulangnuge area. <laughs> Members behaved aggressively following the response made to the allegation by UPFA councillor T. A. Surasingha. Our correspondent said that this situation was a result of T. A. Surasingha speaking in a manner that insulted the JVP councillor. The proceedings of the council resumed afterwards. Leader of the House, Lakshman Kiriala today said that the American government had notified him that they have no intention of establishing, uh, establishing rather, a military base in the northern province of Sri Lanka. It is said that discussions are underway with the American embassy to establish an American military base here. The people of the country fear this. It is being reported that this will be constructed in Trincomalee of the northern province. If this happens, it will be a threat to the independence and sovereignty of the country. A report on this should be submitted to parliament. I clearly stated yesterday that during every discussion the American government had stated that they do not have any intention of establishing a military base in the northern province. They have informed the Prime Minister as well. The American Embassy also issued a communique. We have now made a statement on this. If you want, this can be taken up later. What happened is now the people are scolding them for illegally taking over the government. Then they are shouting and saying that this has been given to America. So what I'm saying is, I did not speak about Trincomalee. The people who have come to speak here are those who took over the government illegally. It's not anyone else. So like you said, we will give time for a debate to be held on this matter. The position of opposition leader was again subject to debate in parliament today. The do the UPFA indisputably had the second largest number of members of parliament, they could not hold the post of leader of the opposition as they were part of the government. Secondly, the Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksa, they appointed to the post of leader of the opposition under Article 9, Subsection 13A of the Constitution of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Subsequent to his having become a member of the Pudijana Perimana, a political party, distinct and different from the UPFA, on whose nomination paper, Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksa's name appeared at the time of the election, and 30 days having elapsed from the date on which he ceased to be a member of the UPFA, he ceased to be a member of parliament and could not therefore be the leader of the opposition. 
The United National Party Working Committee had granted approval to the appointments made to a number of key positions and new positions in the UMP. Speaking to News First, UNP General Secretary Minister Akhila Viraj Kharuye Wasam said the name of State Minister Huan Vijay Vardhana was approved for the post of Deputy General Secretary. MP Palita Rangya Bandara was appointed as the Secretary for the party's Trade Union Affairs. MPs Ajit P. Pereira and J.C. Alawatuala were appointed as Deputy Organisers. In addition, Ministers John Amaratunga, Ranjit Madhuma Bandara and Lakshman Kiriyala have been appointed as the party's Senior Vice Chairman. The 158th Udagammana project constructed in the Nimalagama area in Ingiria Kalutra was bested with the people today. The event was held under the auspices of Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Minister of Housing, Construction and Cultural Affairs, Sajit Premadas. This village consists of 27 houses and has been named Indradasa Hetiarachi village. The village which was constructed under the Community Participation Housing Development Program includes several facilities including access to proper roads, internal road systems, electricity and clean drinking water. House deeds were also distributed in line with the event. Former Minister Indradasa Hetiarachi also participated in this event. <laughs> Whether they like it or not, I will succeed from all my obstacles and achieve my target of constructing 20,000 model villages to the people of my country. I will provide shade to everyone. I do not care whether the officer represents the flower bud or the elephant. That is not relevant to me. I only want to quench the thirst of the people. I am planning to lay the foundation stone for the Mahindra Rajapaksa village near the Madamulana Walawa. Isn't that good? <laughs> However, when ministers were appointed illegally and the prime minister was appointed illegally, what did they do? They destroyed the plaque at the village that was constructed on behalf of Amaradeva. They destroyed the plaque at the village constructed for the people whose sight is impaired. I am waiting to see as to what they will do to the plaque when I construct the Mahind Rajapaksa village. <laughs> We hope that he too will become the president of the country like his father. We all should hope for this to happen. Before heading into more local stories, we would like to apologize to our viewers for the technical glitch that occurred during the previous news report. And we also apologize for the incorrect portfolio mentioned uh, on Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and opposition leaders are some, I beg your pardon, TNA MP are Sambandan. With that, we move on to more local news. Steps that should be taken to control the spread of the Sena caterpillar were discussed at a media briefing convened by the Agricultural Fac Faculty of the Peradeniya University. Africa, in Africa, they rushed and took immediate steps to curb the spread of this pest by using pesticides. Then the World Health Organization said that we rushed to action in Africa and because of that favorable insects in the soil were also destroyed and added that there were issues to the food and health of the people as well. So because of that we must look into how we can provide concessions to the people who suffered losses due to this. In the meantime we must be careful of the steps that we take. We should not lose the opportunity we have to control the spread of this pest in the future. <laughs> We must especially look into where the institutions are and where the farmers are. I am of the opinion that if we are looking towards a long-term program, the farmers should be brought closer to the institutions so that they can present their ideas on the matter. This is now a situation in the country. We will, in our research and studies conducted at our laboratories, contribute to the overall scientific development of the agricultural sector of the country. <laughs> The position of opposition leader was again subject to debate in Parliament today. The do the UPFA indisputably had the second largest number of members of Parliament. They could not hold the post of leader of the opposition as they were part of the government. Secondly, the Honourable Mahindra Rajapaksa, the appointee to the post of leader of the opposition under Article 9, Subsection 13A of the Constitution of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Subsequent to his having become a member of the Pudijana Perumana, a political party, distinct and different from the UPFA, on whose nomination paper, Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksa's name appeared at the time of the election, and 30 days having lapsed from the date on which he ceased to be a member of the UPFA, he ceased to be a member of parliament and could not therefore be the leader of the opposition. 
you stated that you would respond to these questions on a later date. Honourable Speaker, the final decision on this matter is in your hands. You are given a decision now. That decision cannot be challenged inside or outside of Parliament. This House must resolve the issue if the positions of leader of the government and the leader of the opposition can be held by members of the same party. There were three precedents for this situation in this chamber before and after the 19th Constitutional Amendment. When President Maitripala Sirisena was the president of the country, Nimal Siripala de Silva held the position of opposition leader in the country. When Chandika Bandaranaika Kumaratunga was the executive president of the country, Mahinda Vajapaksa held the position of opposition leader while he was a member of the same party. When T.B. Vijayatunga was the executive president and the head of the cabinet, Honorable Ranil Vikram Singha held the position of opposition leader. At this point, of order was raised by Honorable Sambandan MP today in the House. Let me inform the House my position in respect of the matters raised. In my ruling delivered on the 8th January 2019, I have not in detail touched upon the subject of conflict of interest pointed out by Honorable Sambandan MP in his statement uh, made on the 19th December 2018. And I wish to state the following. The promotional activities of the Sports First Allianz 2018 Platinum Awards organized to recognize the sportsmen and women in the country was held today as well, centering the Trincomalee district. This program is being organized with the support of the Education Ministry and the Ministry of Sports. Sports First team received the blessings of the Tirukoneshwaram Kovil this morning before the commencement of the promotional activities. The team then arrived at the Singhala Central College in Trincomalee. Baseball, rugby and football was introduced to the schools in the area in line with the promotional activities. Athlete N. Udayanti or the Patti Pidel Mahavidyale was awarded the gold medal for the best sports personality in the Trincomalee district. Meanwhile, the convoy carrying the torch of hope in line with the Sports First Alliance Platinum Awards was warmly welcomed by the residents of the area, including sportsmen and women. The team reached Polonarua after travelling across Kantale and Habarana. With that, we bring to a close this edition of Primetime News on TV1. In case you missed any of our stories, to stay updated on the latest stories as and when they happen, simply log on to our award-winning website www.newsfirst.lk. For the News First team, I am Zarma Ratnayaka. And I'm Mayana Bongzo. Have a great weekend ahead. Good night. Good night.